Uh, this is the um, <clears throat> first video that I've done in ages. This time it's not on a on an Audi TT, however. It's on um, an F56 Mini JCW. Uh, I bought it last year. I've done quite a lot of mileage in it since I bought it. And um, it's due a set of brake pads. Now, the light hasn't come on. Um, I'm about to do a trip to Europe and I'll be doing about 2,000 miles. And I know that the brake pads are pretty close. The car's just done 27,500 miles. So I've done about 20,000 in it. And um, I don't want to be in the middle of France and then the light comes on and then you've got 1,000 miles or something. And then I've got all the, the way back worrying that, you know, I really need to change the pads. So I've made the decision to change them now. Um, I've got on the floor here a few things that you're going to need to do the job. There are loads of ways you can do it. Everyone will have their own, you know, how they jack the car up, what they do when they put the pads in, where they put the grease, all the rest of it. So this is, you know, just the basics. You can take from it what you want. Um, you know, I, I haven't actually done the pads on this car before. It's got the original pads in. And um, I've got everything I think I need. We'll see if anything gets stuck or, or jammed or is a problem, but it, it shouldn't be. Uh, the car's cleaned religiously and stuff and it's looked after so it should be okay um right so in terms of in terms of the car that's the car there um please ignore the the spare wheel on the back i've got a had a had a blowout on the back wheel so that's getting sorted um right so it's got the big brace got the brembo uh front calipers and because of that you're gonna need if you look here you're going to need a drift to take the pins out so obviously the first thing you need to do is jack the car up i'm not going to tell you how to jack the car up if you don't know how to jack your own car up then you shouldn't really be doing your own brakes um you could do it on a ramp you could put axle stands on um i'm going to do one side at a time i'm just going to use the jack um i'm not getting under the car don't ever get under the car with a jack um as the only thing that's holding it up um but you know, for this, as far as I'm concerned, jacking the car up, taking the wheel off and getting on and taking, taking the pads out and putting some new pads in will be sufficient. I have got a few things here, however. I've got this Powerflex um, jacking pad. These are really good, I think. Um, you They slot in at the bottom here. <clears throat> Just under here somewhere, there's that pad there. You can see it. And that will just protect the sill a little bit. So it's that. They're only about 20 quid for one of those. Um, I've got a new sensor. Because the sensor's um, sort of a sacrificial. So that'll need changing. I've got a set of drifts here. I think it's a four millimetre one that you'll need um, to bash out the pins. I've got a wire brush. I've got a, a good hammer. You want a good strong hammer to get the pins out you don't want a little pin hammer out your diy box um i've got a breaker bar oh, socket lock and wheel nut some brake cleaner and um i brought some cleaning stuff here because i want to just give things a little bit of a clean down um in terms of pads there are loads of pads <clears throat> that you can get you could go for some performance ones you could buy stuff from Eurocar parts. Padgett, I'd be comfortable putting Padgett's in. It's up to you. You need to do your research. This, for me, is a daily car. It's, um, you know, I, <clears throat> I'll take it for spirited drives occasionally on a weekend or like the, I've got a, a Euro trip coming up um, when I'm going to go to the south of France. And, you know, I've, I do everything on the car myself. I've serviced it every 6,000 miles um, and I always buy the genuine bits. Um, yes, it might cost me a little bit more. These were £124 for genuine pads, which is a lot of money for a set of pads. And yes, you know, people can jump in the comments and say, oh, could have got some performance pads for that. Yep, you're right, you could. Um, but I don't want performance pads. And the way that I see it is I'm doing the work. I'm doing the labour. It's not costing me anything. The original pads have lasted 27,500 miles, a little bit more. There's probably another 1,000 miles in them. Therefore, you know, putting original pads back in makes sense to me. Right, um, I've got, to, they gave me some grease, but you know, you can use your own copper slip or whatever it is that you prefer to use. There's all sorts of information on the internet about whether you should use copper slip or, you know, 
specific grease for the for the sliders and stuff like that i'll let you do your research and decide what you think's best for that so that that's pretty much everything um, i'm going to get the car jacked up and then uh we'll get on with the job right so there's a trim that you need to take off here there's two sort of quick release screws there and there's one down here and there's a little a little nut here you need to take that off and just to get to the brake reservoir so you're gonna have to take the cap off since i'm going away for you know to do quite a few miles um i know the brake fluid was changed not that long ago because i had some work done on the car under warranty and had to do the brake fluid but we're just dip testing it just to check since we're here we might as well you know and it'll just tell us what what the water content is in the in the fluid go on give it a give it a whirl that's it, zero that's percent. It. Zero percent. There you go. So that's good. Worth doing if you you know if you're messing about with the brakes, if the brake fluid hasn't been changed and you you know you're not that fussed about keeping it at the service interval and you just want to check it, you know. But you should, you know, keep on top of your brake fluid um changes and so on. So um down here, car's jacked up. I have put an axle stand on just to stop people getting the knickers in a twist. Um but the first thing we're gonna do is to drift out these pins. And then we can take out the retaining clip um, around here. And then hopefully <clears throat> they come out all right. And then you can um, then you can slide the slide the pads out. Go for it. Ah, oh, that's a beaut. So far anyway. Hang on, start the twist. Right, do this one. See that's starting to move there. Yeah. Right. I'll push the clip out there, that's it. Oh, that's one. Do that one. It's amazing how dirty they get, isn't it? Need cleaning, definitely, that's for sure. There we go. Lovely. Out. Right. At least I doubt these are just going to slide out. Anyway, um, let's have a look. I don't want to damage the paint on there. No. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's getting there really, isn't it? There's probably a little bit of life left in that, but you know, I'm comfortable changing those, knowing that I'm going away for you know ten days. Right, so when you get, you, you've got a retaining clip here and you've got the pins, um, you know, it might be advisable if they get stuck and you bend them, you, you're going to have to change them. But as it happens, these came out reasonably well. So I'm just going to show you cleaning them up. This is what they look like when they came out. I mean, I clean this car regularly um, and, and get a brush right in, like a detail and brush right into the calipers and stuff a lot, like quite often. So um, they're not too bad. The car hasn't done a million miles yet. So... Um, you know, be prepared that you might need to change the 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 pins, the slide pins. Um, but this is one way of doing it. We're just getting a little bit of emery cloth and just gently around the shaft of the pin. Give it a little bit of a clean. You can see there, that comes up with me. Yeah, it's just one way of doing it. You might have a way of doing it. It's better. You might want to just do it by hand. You might not have a drill. You know, the way you do it is is up to you. But this is just one way of of cleaning those pins. Yeah, there we go. And they 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 they'll be absolutely fine to go back into the caliber with the new pads. Um, the retaining clip, just a little bit of. Um, I'm just going to clean it with some belt hammer um, and a brush. You could use wire wool or something to clean that up. Right, okay, so just wanted to prove that all the pads are the same. They're not sided or anything. Um, there's not like a left or a right. They're all the same here, if you look at the tops. Um, what I've done is I've cleaned everything. It's a good opportunity to give everything a bit of a, a rinse down and stuff. Um, cleaned as much as I can of the calipers. Um, just going to let it dry a little bit and I've gone over with a microfiber as much as I can to get everything dry um, before I put anything, any pads and any grease on. Um, but yeah, so this is, for me, this is an opportunity to clean things down. Uh, but I just wanted to show that the pads were the same. There's no sided, um, you know, right or left or anything like that. And uh, yeah, so we're going to start putting things back together um, and we'll, we'll, we'll 
you know, create some footage to show how they go back together and how the pins go in. So I've got some grease pads, these BMW just gave me them when I went in for the pads but there's all sorts of stuff you can buy and then what we've done is we've just greased the edges there where it's going to sit in the caliper and then peeled off the tape so that sticky pad there is going to stick to the the pistons inside the caliper. Alright, right okay so this this is everything put back together, um, give it all a wipe down, pads are in on this side pins are in, retainer clips in, everything's had a bit of a clean and um, I'm just going to put the wheel back on and on the other side which we haven't done yet um, there is there is the sensor to put in so I'm going to film and the video will be a bit of a mashup of, of both sides really just so that anyone watching who hasn't done this can get a good idea of how they would do it themselves and uh, Hopefully that should make it easier for someone who hasn't done it before. Right, that's that side done and down. Um, I've got a Clark torque wrench here. The uh, torque setting on the wheel bolts on a JCW, on an F56 JCW, is 140 newton metres. Um, yeah, I mean, most people probably don't bother, but if you're going to do it properly and you want the wheels torquing properly, 140 newton metres. Right, okay, so this is the other side. We've done the driver's side. This is the passenger side. This has got the sensor on it. Um, you can see just here, you've got your sensor wire. So I bought a new cable from BMW. It wasn't expensive. It was about 15 quid or something. So we're going to knock the pins. Jem's going to knock the pins out of this side. Um, and we can just see it being done. Go for it, Jem. came out a tree that. Right, so the next job that we're gonna do is you've got to release a bit of pressure from the from the pistons here so that you can get the pads out and the the pistons need pushing back. Now there are there are various ways of doing this but the main the main thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you don't nip any of the seals on the pistons and you don't want to damage the face of the disc. So getting something like a you know a small screwdriver and just gently in some carefully thought out places, putting a little bit of pressure on just so you can break the, the sticker on the back of the pad and just push the pistons back a little bit. Um, obviously we'll need to take the sensor out here and then we're gonna to have to take some of the screws out of this arch liner just to get the, the, the plug on the other side. And then we can put all the clips back in and put those back in when the when the pads are back in, the new pads are in once everything's cleaned up. does it that's it you can hear the sticker breaking that's it lovely that was perfect so you can see see there's still loads of meat left on these really but with a long trip coming up in the next few weeks I don't really want to have the light coming on while I'm away so that's why I've decided to change them. That's the original pads there. You can see the sticker here where the where the piston, the face of the piston sits and is, is stuck to.
Right, I just used a little trim tool there just to get that one off. Just goes underneath. There it goes that out. It's that off. Now with a bit of luck, might have to undo that one as well up here. And then Yeah, I'll get an extension for that. Just so I can get into that. Then I can pull the liner back and get to that plug. It's a bit of a pain. Right, so pistons are moved back, calipers are cleaned, and now I've just put a little bit of grease on the mating surfaces, so this top end here, and on the other side, take the sticky pad off, and just slide that pad in position there. And you only need to do exactly the same on the other one, making sure that the mating surfaces are cleaned. The sensor, we've changed the sensor wire over, and we're just going to plug that in now. Like that. There we go. And that's in position. So it's just the other side to do and now the other pad to put in. Okay, so the pads are in. Sensor's clipped in. You'll obviously need to make sure this is all seated right, all the all the loom. So that's all in. Now it's the, the, the slide pins and the retaining clip. So... A little bit of grease on here is going to stop them seizing and allow the pads to, to move um, backwards and forwards when you press the brake pedal. So just a little bit, that's going to help them slide into position as well so you can tap them in at the end um, as they come across and across the retaining clip. So that's the top one in position. But it's not not positioned fully yet. We'll need to tap those in. Right, with a hammer, you're just going to tap them gently, just till the tone of the, the tone of the metal changes. There you go. And then the bottom one. And that's it. Right, that's everything cleaned up. Taking the clips on. Pads are in. Sensors in, arch liners back in, everything's cleaned. Just a case of putting the wheel back on now, and then we'll sort of button everything up. We will need to go on the dashboard and just reset the brake light. Well, there isn't a brake light on, but we're going to have to reset things so it knows that the sensor's been changed. Right, okay, that's the job done. So, um, front pads, wheels are down, torqued up, 140 Newton meters. Now, you know, I have to say, I'm not a mechanic. I just do this, me and my friends, we, you know, we just muck about with the cars and stuff. Um, you know, there's a couple of things to note. There's there's loads of different pads you can put on, you know, there's, you know, people could jump in the comments, well, I'll put this, I wouldn't pay for genuine pads. Yeah, that's fine. You know, there's tons out there. You go Euro car parts and get pads or whatever you want to do. Um, I have my reasons why I bought genuine pads. Um, there was still a load of meat on the pads, to be fair, and... The fact that it's done 27 and a bit thousand miles on the originals is, is pretty good. But with, you know, that trip that I'm I'm planning to go on in the next sort of three weeks down to the south of France for some spirited driving, I didn't really want the light to be coming on while I'm down there. So I made the decision to change them now. So that does actually lead me on to, to mention something about on the dash. I thought that I would need to reset the dash um, and, and let the computer in the car know that I've changed the sensor. But actually, I'm wrong about that. If the lights come on, then yes, you need to go into the dashboard and, and reset it and tell it that it's got a new sensor. Because mine hadn't quite come on yet, then there's nothing to do. It, it doesn't know either way that anything's changed. Um, when you're putting everything back together, don't forget to check the brake reservoir. You know, if it's overspilled or anything and, and, and put the cap back on, put the cover back on. And um, for me, this has been a good opportunity to give everything a bit of a clean um, you know, clean all clean all the slide pins and things. It might be worth if you've got a car with with more mileage on. It might be worth buying a couple of extra pins if they seize and they bend, um, or if they're more corroded than mine were. Then you're going to be in a little bit of a situation where you've got to go away from the car, and you know, go and buy some pins. Um, so just bear that in mind that if you're planning on doing the job, that that might be something you need to do. Um, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, you could use it as a little bit of a guide if you're unsure about doing it yourself, what's needed and how to how to go about doing it. Um, 
I, do, I don't do videos that often, if I'm honest. I'm planning on doing a video on servicing it. I service this car every six months or every 6,000 miles approximately. Um, so I might do a video on and changing the oil and, and filters and, and uh, possibly the spark plugs on the next one. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, might see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye now.